very, very excited to have you here today as we are going to explore the topic of energy. Energy is something that I think so many plant-based athletes have lots of problems with. I have a cat here right now who's, who's very, very eager to say hello. Anyway, um, so energy, right, energy. So energy is something that I feel a lot of plant-based athletes, a lot of athletes in particular, have a hard time maximizing, right? And before we dive into this topic of energy and why you might be feeling like you have low energy and how you can increase your energy and all that good stuff, I want to just briefly remind you of why I created this series. And quite simply, I created this series because I think that it's really important for plant-based athletes, everyday athletes, individuals who are vegan, vegetarian, plant-centered, whatever it is, to have a safe space to explore all of the issues that they're coming up against, all of the messy things in their lives, um, and have a place to explore questions that Google can't really give you answers to, right? Or that if you type these questions into Google, you get really overwhelmed with all the differing opinions and, and uh, it becomes like a total nightmare. So that is the purpose of this series, to explore those deeper questions and to help you get the guidance and feedback that you need in order to thrive as a plant-based athlete. So if you have a question, I want you to click on the link in the description and submit it anonymously, either the description of this video or the description of this podcast. And I want to, again, welcome you and I want you to drop an emoji in the chat box if you are excited to be here. And we're just gonna dive on into it, okay? So like I said, we're gonna talk about energy today. We are gonna specifically talk about how to boost your energy without plant-based supplements or expensive superfoods. Now, the question that I got that I'm gonna be responding to today, I have this question right here. The question is, oh, and I can't tell you how many people I have heard express this online, say this to me in the DMs, you know, in real life, here's the question. I went plant-based because I heard it would give me more energy, but now I feel like I have less energy than I used to. I get tired easily and it's hard for me to push through workouts. Should I go back to eating meat is the question. I want you to type yes in the chat box if you can relate to this. And I want to say that many athletes go plant-based in order to, I think, train longer and recover faster. In addition to all the other amazing health benefits that come with a plant-based lifestyle and all of the environmental benefits and the, you know, you know, animal rights reasons to go plant-based, a lot of people hear rumor of the fact that going plant-based, you know, cutting out meat, eating lots of fruits and vegetables, is this magic pill to the top. Um, and to be quite honest with you, I, my personal experience was that when I went plant-based, I actually did see a really big increase in, the, in my energy levels. I had a, you know, I would train for a little bit longer and I wouldn't get as tired as quickly. I actually distinctly remember the first few months like laying in bed at night unable to fall asleep. It was frustrating. I had so much energy that it was it was frustrating. Um, but I do know that this experience is a little bit different for everyone. I have worked with plenty of athletes who experience a little bit less energy after they go plant-based. And that can be really frustrating, right? That can lead to you underperforming. That can lead to you skipping training sessions and that can just lead to you feeling really, really bad about yourself and starting to believe that maybe this lifestyle isn't for you. And maybe all of the hopes and dreams that you had for yourself as a plant-based athlete, you know, especially after watching, I think, different documentaries like The Game Changers, um, you know, wanting to be one of those plant-based athletes seems like a pipe dream, like something that you should just kind of store away. And I think a lot of people feel duped in this way because, because our expectations aren't met, right? And, and expectations, regardless of what those expectations are for, are honestly 
more often than not based on past experiences. So even if you've never, you know, you, you, this is the first time you, of you trying to go plant-based and you've never tried to go plant-based before and it's just not really working out for you the way that you want it in terms of your energy levels, you get frustrated because previously at other parts in your life, you might have tried checking off all the boxes, doing all the things that you were supposed to do in order to feel a certain way and it might have worked for you. So that's that past experience that I'm referencing, right? Or you might have heard a story of how everybody did everything that you're doing and it's just not working for you the same way. So I, I think it's really important to note that our expectations are often subconsciously a product of our previous experiences. And I think that's kind of not really fair for yourself, right? Because as we continue to move forward in, in you know, the direction of reaching our performance goals, our past experiences live behind us. Yes, we can learn from them, but it's not really fair for us to hold them up um, as the golden standard as to you know, what, what we need to achieve and how we need to achieve it. So without doing any kind of deeper dive internally, a lot of plant-based athletes who experience this decrease in energy get frustrated, right? And they turn to these expensive superfoods. Superfoods, by the way, don't really actually exist. There is no official list of superfoods, right? Or they turn to supplements. Or they go back to eating animal products because they feel like this decrease that I'm experiencing in energy has to be because of the nutritional change that I'm making in my life, right? So go ahead, drop an emoji in the chat box and let me know if this is something you've experienced, okay? I see a lot of you guys are joining us here now, so don't be shy, don't be shy. And I, and I want you to know that there is actually little scientific evidence proving that supplements like ginseng or animal products are going to help you put that pep in your step, help give you that superhuman energy, right? But the reason why these solutions, these products are popular are, are simply because of something that maybe we can call here like the, the elixir effect. This, this one size fits all, take a pill, solve a problem mentality that we have as plant-based athletes that our entire health system is based off of, right? Um, not even gonna get into that because that will be a seven hour speech by me, right? But this idea, and, and I think a lot of you guys already know this, this idea that in order for us to fix a problem, the solution has to directly treat that problem. And it's so much easier to treat a problem than to get to the root cause of that problem because that kind of requires slowing down, zooming out, and doing the work, right? Doing the work like maybe looking beyond nutrition, doing the work like maybe looking at how much we're eating, why we're eating, what else could be affecting our energy levels. But instead, what most of us do is we, we associate this drop in energy with this change in our diet, and then we look for this solution you know, in, in regards to what we put in our body, whether it's a pill, a supplement, a natural herbal supplement, or going back to eating animals, and we hope that it will fix our problems. And I have to tell you that it usually does not, okay? So first of all, I want to note that it is incredibly important to be evaluated by a physician to receive the appropriate evaluation and the appropriate, um, I think, next steps if you are experiencing low energy all of the time for whatever reason, okay? Maybe I don't say this enough in this, in this series, but um, I am not a doctor, as you can tell by my vegan zombies shirt. Um, <laughs> so if you are experiencing low energy pain, that, is, that is causing you pain, that is causing you um, more than just an inconvenience in your life, I really want you to see a doctor, all right? And that aside, now, now I want to explore something a little bit deeper. I want to ask you, how much energy are you hoping to have? And is it realistic for you to put that pressure on yourself to have that amount of energy? Now this goes back to expectations based on past experiences, right? 
people often try to take on too much physically and emotionally because they have done it for so long and it's worked for them or because they have a new opportunity they want to take advantage of or because you know they're like me and they lived for they lived in New York City for 13 years and that's just what you do you just go 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 and this leads to burnout it leads to stress it leads to constant fatigue and it leads to you feeling like you don't have enough energy and quite honestly you might never have enough energy for all of the things that you want to do so these factors this level of stress coupled with any kind of lifestyle change or nutritional change whether you're going plant-based whether you are trying some other kind of approach to eating this could lead to a decrease in energy right and it is almost unrelated to nutrition but your new nutritional habits your new lifestyle might kind of bring those issues to the surface okay but i also want you to know that that you know when coupled with other things like change of season change in schedule change in who is in your environment right all of these things could lead to energy depletion so i really want you if you are someone who is experiencing a lack of energy after going plant-based i want you to zoom out i don't want you to just turn to supplements i want you to zoom out and i want you to think about all of the other factors in your life that could be leading to this depletion in energy so instead of thinking like this lifestyle that seemingly works for everyone is just not working for me for you know all of the things i wanted to, to be working for me for i really want you to to ask yourself if the expectations that you have for yourself are realistic okay and i want to talk a little bit about energy depletion for a second so energy in terms of nutrition is is most often measured in calories right and energy balance is achieved when the calories that you're consuming are equal to the calories that you are burning whether through physical activity or through living breathing bodily functions all that stuff so if you're only focusing on the consumption part, if you're only focusing on the, the energy that you're consuming and wondering why you're, you're experiencing a decrease in your energy levels, and you're not thinking about how you are burning your energy, that's a mistake too, okay? That's why it's important to zoom out, look at your quality of sleep. Is it conducive to the amount of energy that you wanna have? Are you setting yourself up for success there, right? And this is also very overlooked, but stress, like I mentioned a few minutes ago, stressful emotions cause huge amounts of energy. Studies have actually found that, that being vegan can increase your energy, right? Because your body doesn't have to use as much energy for digesting certain foods and for the absence of things like added sugar, saturated fats, cholesterol, all that stuff, right? But if your body is expending more energy on stress, or if you went plant-based right as you started doing this crazy, crazy, maybe exciting, but very intense, um, you know, workout approach or training program, then you're in trouble because you're only looking at the calories in you're not really taking into consideration the calories that you're expending and no wonder you don't have a lot of energy okay this is something that i actually experienced whenever i like i mentioned was living in i don't know if have i mentioned this before on this on this in this series i don't know um but i actually lived in new york city for 13 years i now live outside of philadelphia but before I worked in fitness and nutrition, I actually worked in theater. I was a theater producer and a playwright for years, for years. And, oh gosh, do I not miss that part of my life? Because it was, it was very stressful. I was always on the move. I was always going from rehearsal to work to rehearsal because, of course, it's very difficult to make a living as a theater artist. So all of us theater artists have so many jobs, and I never felt like I had enough energy. And only now, in looking back at what I was doing, I don't know who would have had enough energy for that. 
I don't know who could have survived that without <laughs> completely burning out. But you know, when you're in the thick of it, you don't really realize that what that the standards that you are setting for yourself are are kind of ridiculously high, right? All this is to say that if you go plant based and you're experiencing a lack of energy, I want you to really, like I said, zoom out, think about all the other things that could be affecting your energy level. And I want you to look beyond the energy that you are putting into your body and take a look at the energy that you are expending, okay? Like I said, prolonged stress really zaps our energy levels and it causes physical and mental fatigue and in turn, it really negatively affects our mood, okay? This leads to anxiety, depression, lack of motivation. And I think athletes experience higher levels of stress when their perceived ability to cope or their actual you know, coping strategies are, are overshadowed by a certain stressful event or situation. So if you're experiencing physical fatigue, it may be difficult to complete a workout, right? Or find motivation to train. And you might have difficulty walking upstairs even. You might have difficulty carrying your groceries. Everything kind of feels really, really heavy. And if you're experiencing mental fatigue, you might find it hard to get out of bed in the morning. You might find it difficult for you to concentrate. You might have trouble remaining on task. And all of these things, all of these issues cost you a lot of energy. And I think in many ways are more important for you to consider than Googling um, you know, the best plant-based foods for energy. Because if you consume the best plant-based foods for an increase in energy, but you are still not really sleeping, taking on too much, experiencing a lot of stress and, and all of these things, um, I don't really think that list is going to do you any good, right? And I think that avoiding the management of this kind of you know, stress-related fatigue is going to contribute to other health problems, right? Like high blood pressure, heart disease, diabetes, all of that stuff. So, so if you're not already doing something like talking with a friend about how you feel regularly, journaling, or seeing a therapist, or doing something else that can help you reduce stress like yoga, right, tai chi, then you are not positioning yourself to experience the energy maximizing benefits of your new plant-based lifestyle. And it would be such a shame for you to have gone through all this incredible transformation and effort to go plant-based for you to turn back because of things that have nothing to do with what you're putting into your body, all right? And I do wanna briefly talk about energy in. Even though I, I'm telling you, you can just Google I never like to talk about things that you can just Google, right? Because what, that's just, that's a waste of your time and my time. Why do that? But um, so by all means, Google energy boosting foods for plant-based athletes. Um, things that come up are valid. I have, I have done it, it's fine, it's great. But I want to briefly talk a little bit about my, my new best friend. <laughs> my new best friend, which is water, guys. That's right, just water. So water, of course, has zero calories, right? So it doesn't, doesn't measure up um, that way in terms of energy in, but it is actually the only nutrient that has been shown to enhance performance for, for all but you know, the most demanding endurance activities. Usually for those activities, um, a beverage with electrolytes is more helpful. But since fatigue is actually the first sign that your body may be short on water, I want you to make sure that you are hydrating before, during, and after your training sessions. And I have to tell you, I'm sure you're like so sick of people telling you to drink more water, but the I'm, I'm blushing right now because the amount of health benefits that I experienced once I started regularly drinking water, I actually have water right here, new BFF. We're, we've been in a relationship for like literally just six months. This is actually a smart water bottle that I really love. It's by this brand called Hydrate, and it connects with an app that tracks how much I drink and yells at me with funny notifications, actually, when I'm not drinking enough water. So that aside, I cannot express to you enough how important it is for you to drink more water. Whenever, before I adopted this, 
I'm, I, 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 you know, if you're listening to this podcast, you're probably like wondering why I am giggling right now. But I'm giggling right now because it's so simple. Before I started drinking more water, this is like an advertisement for water. I, I was tired all the time. I would like bruise easier. I would experience more, um, I think, inflammation. My recovery days stretched into recovery weeks. And, um, and I cannot express to you enough how much, Max says, I feel like crap when I don't drink enough water. Exactly, right? Max, I know you've actually produced lots of helpful content about water. So I cannot express to you enough how life-changing it has been for me to simply drink more water. Okay, water, by the way, is, of course, plant-based. So um, that's, a, that's a terrible joke that I always make to people. When they come over, I ask them, I'm like, do you want some water? And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, it's vegan. Is that okay? And they're like, oh, God, this girl has jokes. So I really, again, I really want to zoom out from looking beyond just what you're eating and taking into consideration what else is going on in your life, whether it's stress, whether it's water, right? Max, can you tell us, um, I love that you're here, by the way. I love it whenever nutritionists and other coaches like Max drop into these sessions because we get to have some added insight. Max, can you tell me what you, what you do whenever you are experiencing less energy than you'd like to be experiencing? Just let us know what your go-to thing is, whether it is to take a look at the calories you're putting into your body or whether it's to take a look at the calories that you are expending like through stress. Max, I know that you are a health practitioner and a nurse, so you have a, ex, ex, you experience a level of stress that I can only imagine, right? Um, so I do wanna, I, before I sign off, I do also really quickly want to talk about, you know, food quality versus food quantity. And this goes back to those, those calories in and how that can affect your energy levels. So in terms of quality, like I said, I, I don't want to do, I don't want to give you a deep dive into all of the best foods for increased energy, right? Because you can Google those. But eating foods with a low glycemic index may help you avoid that lag in energy that typically occurs after eating quickly absorbed sugars, right? Or refined starches. So foods with a, with a low glycemic index include Foods like whole grains, high fiber vegetables, nuts, and you know healthy oils as well, like olive oil. So I think that when you start to do your own research, as I know you will, because you guys all do your own research, I want you to really keep it simple. When you find foods that you think are gonna be helpful for you and your energy levels, um, and I want you to also try to stick to whole plant-based foods. Max says that he always spends so much time on recovery, sleep, meditation, and yoga. Yes! Oh my gosh, Max. I don't know if, if you were tuning in earlier, but um, that was a, a huge thing that we were talking about here in this session and how important it is to focus on, focus on getting in touch with things that are going to help you feel more energized regardless of what you put into your body, right? I also really quickly want to mention something, you know, we talked about quality of food that you're putting in your body, and I want to briefly talk about the quantity of food you're putting in your body. So your low energy could actually be a result of you not consuming enough energy or calories and then working out too much on top of that, right? So you can increase your calories, um, you know, on, on, your, on your whole food plant-based diet by just increasing your overall protein sizes, by adding more snacks throughout the day, by drinking smoothies, right? By adding more vegetables to your meals, all of that good stuff. So I think a lot of us are aware that when we transition to a plant-based lifestyle, we tend to consume fewer calories. And all this really means is that you get to experience consuming more food. And if you were to simply consume a little bit more food than you may be used to, right? Of course, I don't want you to eat until you're uncomfortable. But if you were to experience eating a little bit more food, that might, that might very quickly solve your energy crisis, okay? You could also focus on incorporating more calorie-dense foods into your diet. 
like adding, you know, nuts and nut butters or seeds or, or avocados. I often find that adding more calorie dense foods is really helpful for people who just don't have a very big appetite and don't like being told that they need to eat more food and eat more calories, right? Um, sometimes it's, it's not just about the, you know, the size of the food that you're eating, but it's about how many calories are in, healthy calories are in smaller portion sizes. And a lot of these issues exist with non-plant-based people as well, okay? They are not exclusive to just you, but taking some of the steps that I, that I spoke about here today, I think is going to not only boost your energy, your productivity, and your mood in the kitchen and in the gym, but it's going to also motivate you to stay committed to your plant-based lifestyle so that you can get back to reaping all the benefits of that lifestyle, right? All the health benefits so that you can finally <laughs> reap the energy maximizing benefits that you have heard so much about. And so that you can, of course, um, you know, continue down this path of a lifestyle that is environmentally friendly, great for animals, great from a social justice perspective, and I'm biased, but you know, tens across the board. Okay, guys? So I really hope that, that this episode was very helpful for you in terms of getting some answers to your energy questions, right? And I gotta tell you, other than protein, I think energy is the biggest thing that plant-based athletes kind of struggle with. So if you are struggling with your energy levels, as always, shoot me a message, let's chat, let's talk about it, let's set you up for success. And if you have a question when it comes to reaching your fitness goals as a plant-based athlete, particularly one that you have been a little bit too shy to ask elsewhere, or that the answers on Google have been totally overwhelming for you, I want you to submit it anonymously in the link in the description of this video or of this podcast, and I'm going to answer it live in an upcoming episode, okay? Max says, yes, I've added an extra smoothie a day. I noticed when I made the switch to plant-based, I needed to eat a little more. <sighs> Max, the voice of reason. Yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. And like I said, I think a lot of people don't necessarily, don't necessarily um, connect those dots, okay? So thank you so much, Max. Oh, I just love you. So guys, if you have any questions about this, like I said, shoot me a message. And if you want to learn more about my program where we dive into all of this stuff and we, we link arms and we really zoom out and we take a look at all the things that are going on in your life, not just the nutrition you're putting in your body, I want you to go ahead and I want you to shoot me a message. Let's talk about it. Let's see if you are right for the program and if the program is right for you. So you can always message me on Facebook or Instagram at Power by Daria, or you can shoot me an email at Daria at Power by Daria dot com. Alrighty guys, I really enjoyed this conversation. I look forward to touching base with you next week where I will be live on vacation in Hawaii for what it's worth. So <laughs> that's going to be really fun. And I love you all so much. Max, thank you so much for stopping in. You are such a gem and you are such a, an amazing part of this community. I just love you. All right, guys. Thanks so much. Take care and I will talk to you soon.